Sir Mark Lebedev is still our my guest, and uh, he doesn't want to run away from me. So we will continue this uh, this uh, nice chat. Uh, so how it all started? So uh, w when you have decided to sacrifice yourself for volleyball? <laughs> uh, this is a really tricky this is question. A really nice. Um, it's a really nice description. Um, um, my I come from a volleyball family. Um, so my, my father was a, uh, he was not a player or coach, but he was a administrator. He was the president of the Federation of Australia and, and he was one of the people that was, that really built us volleyball in Australia in the, the sixties. Um, and so I was around volleyball for, um, even before I was born when, um, I, I started to, I, I could hear the volleyballs when my mother was at the gym. Um, okay. So I, uh, I didn't start playing until, until later, but after I started to play, I, I, I really loved the game and um, I, I couldn't imagine, I couldn't imagine doing anything that was away from volleyball and the, the only the only option really is to be a coach. So uh, I could be some administrator like my father, but that was not really fun. Okay. Um, so I was 21 and when I decided to be a coach. Okay, well, that's that's a lot of time. Uh, okay, so so you're currently 53 years old. So uh, you're currently a coach, 32 years old. So I am 32, Jesus, wow, it's a... Uh, <laughs> It's plenty of time. It's a plenty of time. No, sorry. It's no, no offense, please. Okay. It's a, it's a long time. Yeah, it's a, it's a very long time, but uh, it means that you, you're probably currently one of the most experienced coaches in the world. I think. Uh, I, I don't. Uh, there are lots of experienced coaches. Okay. I don't think there is. I don't think there is a ranking. Um, but you think there are play, there are people that are still active like uh, like Prandi and Bagnoli and sure. um, and Carpol. Uh, these guys were um, they were top coaches before I started to play. So um, okay, okay, you, you, Mr. Lebedev, can you tell me how 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 looks the volleyball in in Australia? Do you have some? Um, school classes or sport classes uh, they are uh, focused uh, just for for volleyball how how does it look in, volleyball in is uh, is quite popular in schools um, and there are some schools but not many where you can play volleyball like a school subject mm -hmm. um, and a lot of schools where you can play volleyball as a school sport so you practice after school and you play some competition maybe on the weekend and there is a very big uh, tournament in Australia for school school teams um, at the one time every year with 250 teams and um, this kind of event uh, but after that we the club uh, volleyball in Australia is very small um, we don't have any national league. We don't have any anything professional, anything close to professional. Um, what we do have is a system of uh, finding, identifying, and uh, training uh, a small group of players uh, in mostly in Canberra at the Olympic Training Centre. Yeah. Um, and these are the players that become the national team. So uh, we we train. We can have I don't know in Australia maybe men's team there are twenty players who are who are pretty good players, not um, not you know the same level as uh, 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 as the Polish Polish or Italians, but good players. And these are the players of the national team and. Um, but after that, that's that's all of that's all of volleyball in Australia. Okay, 
please uh, tell me, your coach. I, I just uh, oh, I, I lost my question. That I wanted to ask you. Uh, okay. Uh, so you you said you you said once you you have answered me that you're ready to come back uh, on the bench. So you agree with that? So you you still you still want to to be back? You so did did uh, did somebody make you an offer? You can't refuse already, or you, you're still still waiting? <laughs> Uh, and after the 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 period with the national team and Zabiecha, I was really um, I was really exhausted. It was a really long um, the the time with the national team was was really uh, really stressful and was season 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 and um, uh, so right from sort of. Uh, February, March, I uh, was really happy to have some some break, uh, some quiet time. But uh, the what I said before, the passion is is still there, and um, I have new ideas, and I'm uh, I'm ready to be I'm ready to be in the in the gym. Okay. Uh, for offers, uh, my phone is always on. Um, <laughs> okay, but uh, did you did you did you did you have already some some um, uh, requests or some calls? Uh, so uh, if you if you uh, can uh, if you can tell me, can't tell me, so just to sh shake your uh, head to, to say yes. So I, I blinked twice. <laughs> blink, twice if, you, if you blink twice, the answer will be yes, and if you blink uh, three times, the answer will be no. <laughs> Uh, on this topic, I have nothing to share. <laughs> okay, officially. Okay, okay, got it. <laughs> All right, but uh, I don't think that I, I'm pretty sure that uh, you have you you had some requests already. But uh, okay, so 2021 will uh, start, so we can. I hope that uh, we will uh, we will hear something for, from from this perspective because, uh, as we already know, you're the value added in a, in the Polish league, so. Hopefully that uh, we will see you uh, on the bench in the in, in the near future. So, uh, so, coach, how do you think? Uh, what is the biggest difference between women's and men's volleyball, uh, excluding, of course, uh, physical conditions? Hmm. I don't. I I, I don't watch a lot of women's volleyball. And it's difficult for me to. It's difficult for me, and I can say some things that uh, that are. Um, but I think that um, one big difference is I think that the coaches work in a different way in, with women and with men, uh, and I think they practice in a different way. Uh, so the outcome is. That the volleyball is a little bit uh, is a little bit different. I think I think that uh, women's volleyball has some uh, differences from team to team, uh, but within each team, I think there is a higher level of uh, organization. I think the men are more uh, spontaneous. They're more uh, creative um, than uh, not men's volleyball and women's volleyball. Not men and women. This is not. Uh, this is a different. I'm for sure. I'm not qualified to discuss this. But <laughs> okay. I think the. I think men's volleyball is a little bit more uh, spontaneous uh, than women's volleyball. Maybe this is the. This maybe this is the biggest difference for me. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that sentence that, okay, so the, the men's volleyball uh, has already evolved. Uh, yeah, everything is uh, higher, everything is stronger, everything is uh, faster. But in, in we, we, women, vo women's volleyball, there is still uh, much place to uh, for, for improvement. I think that there is a lot of, there is room for improvement in, in all volleyball, in men's volleyball also, I think. Um, I, I studied a lot this this last month. So I've watched every match from Plus Liga. I watch more volleyball this season than ever before, uh, and I can I can see some some big areas where we can improve defense. For example, I think 
that uh, defense in men's volleyball can improve by, I think, a really big, make a really big jump. And um, and this is the thing that, that I've been working on uh, just recently. So, um, you know, I, women's volleyball, for sure, they can, uh, they can also change, uh, improve things. I think uh, if we stop thinking that there's a chance to improve, then... Uh, the game becomes will become less interesting. Okay, so uh, you said that uh, the men's defense can jump uh, on the higher level. So can you can you share some details uh, in that topic? Uh, no. <laughs> no. I'm thinking. I'm I'm just trying to think of an easy way to an easy way to explain. Okay. I think. So, mm -hmm. I think that. Uh, I think I'm sure that spikers don't act in the way that uh, we think they act. Okay. And so that you... means that in the defense, we can look at different things than we look at now. And if we put those two things together, we can change the way that we play defense. Okay. Okay. So. Hope to see that soon on the on the court. <laughs> okay, so but uh, would you? Um, I, I will continue the, this uh, women's uh, volleyball topic. So if um, if uh, you would uh, receive an offer from a uh, women's club, would you would you accept it? Uh, I I I can't say exactly yes or no. Um, uh, if there was an interesting project. Uh, then for sure I would consider women's volleyball. Um, I know I did once get a, a call from a, a women's coach to work with uh, uh, to work with a national team like a assistant, um, and uh, I would have said yes to this. So uh, if the project is interesting, I'm open for for anything. Okay, so dear coach, so what was your biggest challenge in your uh, career? Uh, the biggest challenge. Um, yes. I don't know. I, I I think I only had challenges. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. okay, okay. Okay. So, but for for example, so we we we, we know exactly that uh, when you came to yes, Chambia, uh, yeah, yes, Chambia, yeah, uh, mm, Chambia uh, didn't have a mm, big budget, but uh, still you you have uh, built a very nice team. You found uh, Salvador Hidalgo Oliva, which uh, who, who was a star in our league. So, uh, so yeah, and uh, you you could still compete uh, with with the best teams uh, in our league. Yeah. So maybe maybe yeah. This is an example. Yeah. So what is your, uh, what are your thoughts about it? Yeah, it's it's a little bit how you what what does it mean challenge, but. This this time in in Yashchemsky when when I was there it was a really difficult time for the club. Uh, the players were not being paid. Even the season, even the season that we had the bronze medal, the the payments were never complete and never on time. Uh, so to manage this situation and still have a high level of performance is uh, that's a really that's a really big challenge because um, you know for sure you know the stories in the league about which other teams that are are being paid and not being paid and uh, you can you can see in the in the way they play it's very difficult uh, for for people to invest themselves when the club is not uh, is not fulfilling their half of the contract so. Uh, I think this this period in in Yashchemia, especially the, the the first two years, uh, was was really uh, was a really big challenge and um, something I'm really proud of that period. Um, and the working with the national team with a um, not big names, not big um, expectations, and and trying to. Uh, trying to change the way that uh, that the players were thinking about uh, how good they are, uh, how they can still compete against the the best teams, um, and uh, we we also had some 
some really good success. We were able to, um, you know, to to reach to play at a really high level, uh, even without big names and big stars and uh, expensive players, and just by uh, working together and raising our our own expectations. So um, maybe those are the maybe those are the two biggest ones, but. Uh, Everything has everything is just everything is some challenge. Yeah, that's right. But uh, how how can you motivate the play uh, the players uh, when when you or when you know exactly that okay they they um, didn't receive their paychecks uh, they when they have to pay bills they have uh, credits they have uh, their cars families and everything uh, so how. Uh, uh, you're in the position that you need to you need to motivate the, these people to play to uh, compete on the highest possible level yeah but uh, it, it's it's hard so uh, how did you do that because it, it, I'm pretty sure and uh, yeah you, you you know that it was it was a very hard job so if you, if you can for example there's a uh, we know exactly that there are uh, in, in a few clubs there are some yeah, money troubles and yeah. so what would you what would you recommend to the coaches they they are exactly the, in the same situation you were in Yaschambia in the first two seasons um it's not there is nothing that's a, like a recipe you can't you can't say you do the first thing and then the second thing and the third thing and then everything will will be okay uh it's easier if you have young players because uh, young players, you can talk with them about their uh, about their goals, and that this is this is some uh, step to to yes. achieving their, their goals. Um, and also, the young guys probably don't have a family; they don't have the they don't have the bills. So, money has a different meaning uh, for twenty a twenty year old to. Um, doesn't have a girlfriend and a thirty-year-old who has two children. So, yeah. um, you know, there is this is one, um, and then you just with the other guys, you you try to find the what the motivation, what the motivation is. Um, you try to have them work uh, with with each other in mind. So, um, yeah, Piotrek, if if you don't help you, if you don't do your job, then um, it, it can be a problem for uh, Kuba uh, for next season, and um, you know, and and the other the other thing, of course, is that um, if you uh, if you win, you are more likely to get paid than if you lose. So, of course, yeah, um, yeah, that's <laughs> this for sure. Also, this is also true, and and in Yashambia, um this was this was also the way when we we started to have some uh, some results. Um, then the, uh, then you know the, the, there was a little bit more money, and then um, okay after these two years, then the budget now is I don't know what the budget is, but it was not like the budget when I was there. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Okay, so uh, coach, so I've. From your perspective, what is the what is the most important uh, position on the court? So, if you if you uh, if you would uh, um, if you um, uh, okay, so uh, you're a, you you have a budget and uh, you need to build a completely new team. So, from which position would you start to build it? Uh, if I'm working in the Polish league, I would start from the Polish players. Okay. Uh, okay. Just the <laughs> because every situation is a little bit different. So, because in Poland you can only have uh, you can only have three foreign players. Yeah. So it's really important that, that uh, you have the Polish players. The Polish players. First. So if it's if it's possible. So if you can have a a Polish setter or a Polish opposite or Polish receiver. Then you have a big chance to get um, uh, to get uh, a good level a good level team because the foreigners there are always a lot of foreigners available. Okay, the top 
the top 10 players are the top 10 players, but um, in the middle, there are 100 players that are more, all more or less the same. So um, if you can get the, the top Polish players, then uh, you can build a, a really good team. And um, that's, the, that's, the, that's the main thing. Um, but, but probably, and I think you can see in Plus Liga this season, uh, that the setter is really important um, and maybe more important than uh, maybe the most important the most important player. So if you look at the at the table, the, the best setters in the league this year are um, uh, it's Tonyuti, is Janusz, is um, some combination in, in Yeshembia, Kampa right now. Um, and uh, and even Fele in Katowice. These are the yeah. um, these are the these are the top guys, and they are uh, closer to the top of the table. What about the Grzegorz Womacz? He's still a uh, uh, world champion. <laughs> uh, he is he is playing okay, but Berhato don't have such a such a good such a good season. So. Um, he doesn't look as good as the other guys, and which which one yeah. comes first is is uh, is difficult to say. Yeah. Okay. But of course, he is still a top setter. Uh, Fabian Gisgo is still a top setter. Uh, so, you know, but uh, the combination of things right now is uh, is a little bit more for for the other guys. Yeah, that's right. So, you have already a few medals in your car. Uh, you receive. Uh, you won uh, already a few medals in, in your career, and I wish you a few more. But uh, please tell me, what was your the b biggest success you, you achieved till now, of course? Um, <laughs> okay. Was it in Berlin? Uh, <laughs> yeah, in in Berlin you have spent five years, five, five beautiful years. Yeah, so tr tr three times yeah. German German champion. And uh, yeah, bronze league, bronze medal in the Champions League, which which was uh, wow, wow. I the uh, all of these are uh, I have the I have goosebumps. I don't know what the Polish word when the the um, yeah Gensha Skurka. <laughs> Gensha Skurka, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, goose 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 skin. Yes, yeah, so, goose skin. That's right. Uh, I. The the first, the championship in the first championship, especially in Berlin, the Champions League, the medal in Yeshembia, but maybe uh, maybe the best one was the Asian Championships um, uh, silver medal with the Australian team. We was in Iran. Uh, we won against Iran in the group. Um, we we beat Japan in the semi final. Um, in the quarterfinal, we were down 2-0 at 10 o'clock in the morning, and uh, and we won this game. So, uh, and maybe this was the maybe this is the most beautiful. But it's like uh, I don't want to say it's like my children because it's not anything like my children. But uh, but they they all bring back some beautiful memories. But maybe this one is the one percent better. Okay, so uh, so I asked you about uh, the biggest uh, the biggest success. So now the biggest failure. Uh, um, in the cup final in Berlin, uh, uh, the cup final in Berlin, we were eleven seven in the fifth set and and lost the cup final. Um, oh. But I forgot. <laughs> I forgot the Olympic qualification was worse. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sorry for that. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was trying to forget that one, but yeah, this uh, we talk about uh, 2020 and all the bad things that happened in 2020. This was uh, the first week of January. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> well. Okay, yeah, it was of course for you as a coach. It was, uh, it was a disaster, and uh, yeah. Uh, 
I remember uh, one game uh, in a half, half, uh, mm, half. Oh, just uh, yeah, I, I got in mind the German words. <laughs> I don't know why. So uh, um, semi final. Uh, semi final. Yeah, half finale. Sorry, <laughs> really sorry for that. Uh, yeah, the semi finals uh, against uh, Ken Jezun, two 0 in the second leg, in the second game, and uh, bitter. Bitter end. So uh, uh, I, re I remember, I remember talking uh, about this even even at the time that uh, even even when it was two zero, um, because because uh, Zaxa was it was a better team than us, and uh, I never I never felt safe i never felt like uh that that we were going to win i never felt we were going to win this game i was really? playing okay we tried to win we tried to win we tried to win one point one point at a time like the like the the coaches say and um and after that the uh the rest of the match they were always a little bit ahead of us so it, it was never that it was 20 22 22 and we have we have one chance for the set so the uh for me the the in this series the biggest moment maybe was the um the first set of the third match and uh we i i remember this that the uh Zaxa was not playing well and and we were uh, we had a big chance to win this, and if we won this set, I think that it could have been uh, it could have been a big difference because they already changed the opposite, they already changed the receiver, um, and they didn't have anything left to do. But we we didn't win the first set, and then they could relax a little bit at home, and uh, and and that was that. So. For me, it was actually the the third match was somehow a little bit more uh, decisive. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I I remember that game and it was uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, uh, the, the second game when I when I when I saw yeah. the third set when you when when Xavier has lost the uh, third third set, I was like, mm, yeah, it's. I don't want to say it say it loud, but uh, it turns around so uh, yeah what what is the role of the coach uh, in the, this kind of situation when you when you see that uh, the car um, the situation turns around the, the, when you see that uh, lack of uh, confidence in your on your on, on the faces of your players uh, when everything uh, goes wrong uh, and uh, what it's uh, when you play against the uh, um, the best team in Poland. Yeah, you, mm -hmm. you 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 have to avoid the avoid the mistakes. Yeah, you can't make uh, many mistakes. Oh, and right. uh, this is uh, this is not this is uh, the wrong way. Okay. If you play against Zaxa and you try to not make mistakes, the um, uh, then you have no chance. So it means because, that you don't risk. Yeah. You, if you okay. don't. If you make no mistakes, you can't. You can never beat Saxa. You can play a hundred times. So okay. one, the the big thing that happened in this match, more or less, was that the um, the 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 experienced players on the Zaxa team they they understood something about the about competition and not the volleyball part of it. And if you watch the match closely, there is a lot more. Uh, there is a lot more trash talking. There is a lot more of the other stuff that that started, and and this was the thing that this was the thing that changed the match. And uh, because um, uh, yeah, the guys in uh, in the Zavieta team didn't have this. Uh, uh, maybe they were surprised or shocked or. Um, some guys said to me afterwards they never imagined that these guys could speak like this under oh, the net. And, really? uh, oh. Yeah. So, um, uh, so maybe maybe it was that. Maybe uh, we just didn't have uh, uh, in that moment big enough balls 
to be uh, to be Australian, to use Australian <laughs> expression. So, uh, okay. Very nice. But okay. it just shows that the difference, the differences are very small, and sometimes they are not to do with volleyball. Mm. Okay. Yeah, uh, Jakub Bednaruk, uh, uh, MKS Benji's coach, uh, said mm -hmm. once that uh, as the coach in Plus Liga, he needs to compete with, uh, yeah, against or with uh, the best coaches in the world. So, would you would you agree with uh, with that sentence? Uh, there are many great coaches in the in the Plus Liga uh, for sure. So, um, uh, we we know all of the names. Um, some of them don't stay here for a long time, but um, but they are they are here for for some time. Like uh, uh, the Georgie, for example, um, you know, to compete against him was uh, was really difficult. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, the many of the the top coaches in the world are, are in post leaguers for sure. Mm -hmm. Why 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 was it uh, so difficult to compete uh, with him? Um, uh, well, he he kept winning. Um, I I never I never beat him. This this semi this semi final the first match that we won, I think was the first was the thirteenth match against uh, against Zaxa, and I lost the first twelve after I came to after I came to Poland. So ouch. Okay. Everybody else, everybody else was more or less 50-50 or a little bit better for me. Um, okay. uh, but uh, but just success. Okay. You say um, you, you said about the provoking uh, in the middle of the game. So do you think uh, the referee should punish the players who provokes the, the opponents or this is the or you think this is the part of the game. But still, it's not the UFC. You you don't need a, this trash talk. <laughs> or, uh, it, or, or is it made, is it make a... Uh, maybe, maybe you do need it, I don't know. Um, okay. The, I have two... I, the first thing is that it's not allowed. Yeah. So, if the rules say that you can't talk underneath the net and you have to turn to your team, then the referees have the responsibility to uh, to referee the game according to the rules. So mm -hmm. they will they have a lot of rules that they know about that we don't know about that they understand the game differently and they call according to the rules. So if this is happening, then I think that uh, that no, not I think they have to they have to follow the rules. Okay, so, but. Um, but I think I think that it's not a bad thing. So if I am playing in the match, I am angry that the other team is breaking the rules and the referee is not uh, is not enforcing the rules. So if you watch the video of this match, you will see that I am angry that the other team is breaking the rules and the referee does nothing about this. But if you go now and you talk to me outside, I think that it's better if they don't have this rule. I think it's okay for volleyball to be, uh, for there to be something, uh, something interesting, uh, some discussion, um, and I'm sure, and the fans would love to see some of the things that uh, that happen in the game if they mm -hmm. if they knew what was going on. It's funny. It's, it's uh, interesting. Yeah, this is. Uh one side of, of the middle but the second one is for example one around one month ago uh andrea anastasi was punished by a polish uh, a polish league because uh, i think he has insulted uh, the uh the, the play yeah yeah the play, player from, from 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 the uh from from the other team yeah, but uh, he, he uh, but uh, I've heard uh, also that, and uh, there, there was a big discussion uh, on the on our board that uh, mm, the setter from Zavierce has provoked uh, uh, the the coach. But uh, yeah, there's you know the, the truth is always somewhere in the middle. <laughs> I I I didn't see all of this, um, but it it seemed like, and I can believe. That there is, there are, before the last thing that we saw, 
there are many things that happen before. In between, so yeah. There is, there is some discussion, someone said something to someone, um, but it looked like uh, whatever the line is that Anastasi was, uh, was, past the, was past this line, so. Yeah, that's right. So, uh, coach, uh, imagine that I am a coach who begins a, his journey and uh, what, advice, what kind of advice would you give me? Uh, uh, on the begin of my path, <laughs> so visit my website, uh, <laughs> <laughs> marklevergy.com. Um, Recommended uh, to go to to go to every match, to go to every practice, uh, to talk to everybody, um, and then to make your own decision. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes the answer is simple. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, so, uh, what are the biggest uh, mistakes uh, made by coaches? How do you think? Um, the biggest mistake made by coaches is that they see some famous coach on TV and think that this is the way they have to work. Okay. But uh, uh, yeah, but uh, when you when you see like uh, when you for example when I when I when I see you on the TV, I, I'm pre I'm sure that you you sacrifice some uh, much time on a, on the training ground uh, with, with the players. So it's it's yeah, uh, just uh, the highest part of the uh, of the um, oh, just uh, ice uh, from, from from iceberg. Yeah, so the ninety nine percent is yeah. So sure the. But a lot of the uh, a lot of the time, you have some idea about how the coach has to be. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, uh, it's from reading, it's from the interviews, um, and uh, and you have you have this idea, and you go to your team and say, "This is the way that I must be. I have to do this exercise. I have to uh, say this to my player. I have to have this rule." Uh, and uh, and this kind of thing, and I this is the this is the mistake. You don't have to do any of those things. The most important thing is that you have to choose your way. Because if I try to choose uh, Anastasi's way, I can't I can't do anything if I choose Anastasi's way because uh, he is Anastasi and I am Lebedu. I have a different personality. I have a different experience. Yeah. Um, I have a different haircut, uh, and all of this, um, all of this makes uh, all of this affects the way the way that you work. So, I have to find if I have to find my way, and if you are a coach beginning, you have to find you have to find your way. 